Hi, it's Rob Bryanton, the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Today's entry is called A Point Within the Omniverse, and Jason's done a nice little video effect for, uh, for me here. This is me within the Omniverse. Today's entry is dated December 8th, 2008. If you'd like to read along, please go to tenthdimension.com slash blog. Last blog entry, we talked about the misinformation some people have spread about this project that says it misuses the word dimensions. We talked about how the extra dimensions that physicists are suggesting our reality comes from are spatial, or some physicists say space-like dimensions. And we talked about the point line plane postulate, which states a way to imagine any number of spatial dimensions, which is identical to the logic that my original 10th dimension animation uses. This entry is really a continuation then of the ideas we were exploring last time. You are a point within the omniverse. The first three dimensions are space, but space without time. Without a fourth dimension to move through, that space is frozen in a particular state. Saying that adding a dimension adds a new degree of freedom makes perfect sense as we move from the third to the fourth dimension. Without time as one of the two possible directions in the fourth dimension, we have no freedom to move no freedom to change from state to state. Now what about the fifth? Kaluza proved, and Einstein agreed, that our reality comes from the fifth dimension. With the fourth dimension, we've pictured a straight line that points to the past in one direction and to the future in the other. Is there only one future? Is there only one wave function that can possibly be observed for our universe? If that were true, then we wouldn't need any more further degrees of freedom. But if, if we are to accept that there are many possible pasts and futures that connect to our now for our universe, then we need an additional degree of freedom to be able to appreciate where those additional states lie. And this project's proposal is that that freedom is found by adding the fifth dimension. Well then, what degrees of freedom is still missing in the fifth dimension? The freedom to move to versions of our universe that are logically incompatible with our current now. Physicists like Michio Kaku and Brian Greene tell us that the wave function for our universe includes events which are so unlikely to occur that they would take longer than the life of the universe to happen. And for our own now, there are branching futures that we simply can't get to from here. But we know that someplace out there in the set of all possible states for our universe, there's a version where it's 2009 and Elvis is still alive. The sixth dimension then, provides us with the additional degree of freedom that allows us to get to those, to those impossible versions of the universe that are unavailable from our current position within the space-time tree of the fifth, time, fifth dimension. Where do we go from there? Again, we continue to use the same visualization as the point-line-plane postulate that we started from. Seven is a line from our universe to other universes with different physical laws. Eight is a plane from our universe to other universes not on the first line. Nine is the information space for moving from one possible or impossible universe to another. Which brings us to ten, the omniverse, an infinite set of indeterminate size, containing every possible state in perfect symmetry, which, like a pencil balanced or a pencil perfectly balanced on its tip, is always ready to fall out of that symmetry and create a pattern of information, a particle, or an entire universe with its wave function of all possible states, just like the one we find ourselves to be in right now. Let's sum it up one more time. Our 3D reality is moving on a 4D line that is actually twisting and turning in the fifth dimension, one plank length at a time, and this is why the fifth dimension and above appear to be curled up from our perspective down here in space-time. Our beautiful universe is being observed through its fifth dimensional probability space. Our beautiful universe is a temporary deviation from symmetry, which is where it was before it began and where it will be after it ends. Which means our beautiful universe is moving towards that unfolded whole, which is the place where everything fits together and it all balances out and becomes the point of indeterminate size that we started from. And you, are a point within the omniverse, and just like Feynman's single electron, you exist simultaneously within the enfolded symmetry, the zero of timelessness, no size, no dimension, where it all comes from and everything is forever. What I keep coming back to is this amazing universe that we find ourselves in 
is just a tiny slice of that much bigger pie that we call the Omniverse. And knowing about the wonderful selection patterns that chose our universe is a cause for wonder and a cause for gratitude. To finish today's entry, here's a song of mine performed by my friend Ron Scott, and it's song 26 of the 26 songs attached to this project. It's called Thankful. My name is Rob Bryanson. Enjoy the journey. World, in this impossible life, at the end of infinite happenstance, leading back to the Big Bang, I am thankful for what I have, I am thankful for what I've been given, I am thankful for those I love, and for this life. Multitude of paths that could have ended before now. I'm grateful for the unseen hand which led us here somehow. I am thankful for what I have. I am thankful for what I've been given. I am thankful for those I love and for this life. For what it holds within A tapestry of threads That each of us must weave From each and every moment that we're in In this improbable world In this impossible life At the end of infinite coincidence Leading back to the Big Bang I am thankful for what I have for what I've been given I am thankful for those I love